I know, I know, you bought the Skytech H101, brought it home, put in the water, and it didn't work. So really disappointing. I'm sure you waited a long time to get it and paid your money and everything didn't work. So uh, we do have a fix for it. So the symptoms you're probably experiencing is the rudder, once you turn it on, it goes off to one side and it just, it won't do anything else. And with or without input from the transmitter, it'll start making a buzzing sound. So luckily, um, it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes to do the fix and we'll get started. So go ahead and pop off the top here. You're gonna move this thing down and you're just gonna go ahead and push this up. That comes right off. Um, one note about waterproofing. So in the beginning, I didn't know how tight this lid really needed to be. So if you look at it and this, this little lip here goes in like that, it can't just sit there. You actually really have to push pretty hard push it forward like this and you'll hear that snap and you'll see how that butts up against it perfectly that'll keep it watertight before if you try to push it and it's only like that it's not going to work and water will will get in like crazy and the whole thing will really flood okay so the issue we're having has to do everything with the servo so this is the servo and basically it's a device it's it's not that expensive this thing is probably like eight dollars and What's happening is the servo is not centered. So when the rudder is centered like this and it looks perfectly aligned, the servo doesn't realize that. And so it's trying to go left when it's already fully left. So what's going on really is we just have to change the angle of this servo arm. So before we do that, you'll notice that here there's four different holes. Where it's kind of rusted there is the initial hole where this thing was attached to. So what would happen is when you put in input through the transmitter and this moves over, it basically overcompensates and goes a full 180 degrees and a little bit further. And it, it tends to mess everything up. So what I did was I just moved it to the top hole. So go ahead and move it from, that's, there's four holes, move from the second hole to the top hole. So that's, that's issue number one. Number two is you're gonna go ahead and remove this screw here and you're gonna pull this servo arm off. And what you're gonna see is there's gonna, be, there's gonna be a servo and then there will just be basically a gear head. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this. So once the screw is loose, go ahead and take that out. And what I like to do is just put it in the lid so you're not losing that. And this servo arm is going to just, you just push it off just like that. So that just pops right off. You're gonna go ahead and put the boat in the water. And again, you're gonna turn on the transmitter. And you're gonna pull both sticks to the right. And then let go. And what'll happen is this circle thing, the gear on the servo will center itself. And once that's centered, then you wanna go ahead and center this as straight as you can. And go ahead and put this thing back onto the arm. And once you do that, then it's all centered and we'll be good to go. We're gonna go ahead and do this by the pool so that as you're setting it up, it's not gonna be lost in a lake or anything where you can't get it. So go ahead and find yourself, if you don't have a pool, obviously, um, you can go ahead and just use a, a pan or the sink, um, kitchen sink kitchen sink or garage sink, whatever it is. You just want to make sure that you can get this sensor wet. Because if that's not wet, then this thing won't turn on. That's basically the safety mechanism so that your propeller isn't spinning and, and hurting you if it's not in the water. So again, we're, we've taken off the servo arm and it's just kind of dangling there. And then we're basically going to reset reset this guy so that it's centered and again how we're going to do that is we're going to gently put the whole boat in the water and we're going to grab the transmitter and we're going to put both sticks to the right so let's go ahead and do that so at this point it doesn't really matter that the rudder is not straight because it's not connected to the servo go ahead and turn on the remote Normally you want to turn, in, turn on the transmitter first, actually. So we're going to go ahead, and as I mentioned earlier, we are going to turn the two sticks to the right. Actually, let's go this here. 
And once it beeps, you let go. And you may not see it, but this servo is now centered. We're back here at the table. So again, we're gonna go and keep that rudder straight. And it's hard to do this while on camera, but basically I'm gonna keep this straight and put this arm back onto, actually that's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap that in place. So again, this is aligned correctly uh, parallel to the length of the boat. And you have not touched the gear underneath and you're gonna go ahead and just snap this down. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the screw back in and we'll go take it for a test run. So remember with all RC cars, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the transmitter first. See the light? Uh, when it's blinking red, just means that it's looking for something to connect to. So right now, the boat's not in the water, so we're gonna put, go ahead and put it in the water uh, gently so that it's nearby and we can grab that in case anything goes wrong, and we'll go from there. So I don't know if you heard that buzzing sound, but basically uh, it's recognized that it's on. So we're gonna go ahead and test the rudder, left, right. So we can see that there's quite a lot of motion, which is good. And away we go. So when you're doing this, you wanna make sure, to, to have the longest battery life, you, you don't wanna actually gun it too fast, too far. I know it's really exciting to have your boat first in the water and then you just really want to just hammer it. But you just want to really be careful. And one thing you want to avoid when you're doing this is you do want to stay clear of all this stuff here, okay? So stay clear of that because if anything gets caught then you're kind of stuck and you're taking a boat out there to grab your RC car. So at first I did play with this in the pool to make sure it had sufficient range. Uh, right now, you can see it's kind of veering to the left. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use this top button to trim it out, okay? So you're gonna click it and you're gonna hear a confirmation beep. And I guess the blue light. So a couple times, uh, it's hard to film this while I'm doing it, but you're gonna go ahead and do that while you're accelerating forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that out and we'll be right back. All right, so it's all trimmed out. Oops, we're gonna back this up so we don't get in the leaves. There we go, so it's, it's going fairly straight now. So that beeping sound is, and the blue light is warning me that we're low on battery. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that in and we're gonna go ahead and use the second battery. This is the stock 1300 milliamp battery. And I believe I have a 1500 milliamp in my pocket and we'll go ahead and swap out batteries. Water that we see in here is actually water from when I was splashing in the pool. So there's actually no additional water from before. Not too bad. All right, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the battery here. Again, this is a JST SM connector, this black thing. Um, in case you need a new battery, you're gonna look up JST SM. And you just wanna make sure that you have a two cell battery. That's what 7.4 volts means it's two cell. Each cell is 3.7 volts. So this is the battery that we just used and we're going to go ahead and put in this one. This one is also a two cell, which it needs to be. 
uh, again, 7.4 volts, and this one's 1500 milliamp hours. So this one will last us a little, slightly longer, and again, GST SM connector. So once you get this going, it's actually quite a bit of fun. I know when you get it out of the box and it's quite a disappointment that it's not working. So with that quick servo fix, it's actually not bad. Uh, I wish they, in the factory, they put it together well <laughs> and centered the servo, but unfortunately they didn't. So we have to do it ourselves. But the boat had cost me, I think four years, maybe three years ago, uh, $43. I think they're around that. Uh, I've seen them at as high as 60. Um, AliExpress has it on sale or for sale for, I believe, $45 right now, 2020. Uh, you may see a blue version of this. That's the H100, which is basically the older version of this H101. I don't know the differences other than the color, but if you can get that for $35, maybe that would be the deal to take. Otherwise, getting this for $45, $50 is not bad. I do have another boat coming that uh, cost $94 and it's actually a 3S model and that thing should hit about 30 miles an hour and that was again 94 bucks so compare that to the price of this guy which is a 2S that won't be going as fast um, to kind of decide and gauge what you're looking for in case you don't already have one of these. So I wanted to show you what happens if the boat gets capsized and how you handle that because one of the great features about this boat is that it can uh, turn back right side up on its own. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, so now you see it's upside down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the throttle here. We're gonna go forward, backwards, forward, backwards until it goes back. So basically you're timing it and there you go. Hopefully you got what you're looking for as far as the H101. It uh, doesn't come great, ready to run out of the box, but we do have a fix and it was about 10 or 15 minutes to get it going. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and uh, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time, see you guys later.